If it were any more British, it would be made of tweed and have a handlebar moustache on the front. The Aston Martin DB7 Vantage Volante. A very, very big car with a very big pedigree. Now, yes, I know I've got an Aston Martin. And yes, I know there's a great big dam behind me. But no, I'm not doing any James Bond Aston Martin gags, OK? They've all been done before, so I promise it's cheesy and I won't do any. Not one. None. Everything about the Aston is enormous, not just the length and the girth of the thing, but the engine, 6 litre V12, over 400 brake horsepower, 6 speed gearbox, all big numbers. The only thing that isn't big, not big enough in fact, is the steering wheel. It's pathetic. I want something up here, a great big wooden rim monster of a thing you could steer a ship by. Aston's have never been lightweight. I suppose all those years ago, whilst Jim Clark was frantically paring every last ounce off the chassis of his Lotus to make him go quicker, the folks at Aston's must have just la 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 la, or maybe they just revved one of their engines so they couldn't hear him. But hold on, got a bit of a problem here though. Soft top. It's not proper, not proper at all. Frankly, it's for girls. I mean, the playing fields of Eton didn't make us frightfully brave just so we can mince around in a giant hairdresser's chariot, did they? Some cars, really vulgar cars, suit having the top chopped. And then others, well, you might as well, because they're never going to be monsters to drive anyway. But an Aston Martin, well, it just doesn't seem right somehow. So enough of this wanton decadence, enough of this, frankly, continental display. I'm going to be sensible, like you should. And anyway, it looks like rain. Ah, that's much more like it. Now in this hushed environment, you can soak up the ambience of what demands to be called a cockpit. Walnut and leather breathe it in. If this were mine, which it is now because I'm not giving it back, I'd be smoking cigars in it just to make it smell proper and as it should. Whilst the looks are never ever going to disappoint, your heart will flutter every time you walk up to this thing. The drive though, yeah. Something to do with taking the top off, methinks. It's a bit like strapping a six-litre V12 to one end of your bed and expecting it to go around corners nicely. It don't. Shake, rattle and roll, I'm afraid. That said, the sound of that V12 is very nice indeed. And it does romp along, Mary. There's a huge surge of mid-range, as you would expect there to be. It's just a long way from being pin-sharp and responsive. Of course, if you fancy it, you are going to need to be seriously minted. I mean, well wedged up. £102,000. Let me put it this way, you can have this car, or you could have all of these. Isn't it funny how some £100,000 cars <laughs> encourage you to waft about waving regally, whilst others, Ferraris and such, tend to lead to rampant posing with rolling up of sports jacket sleeves and <laughs> greasing of hair. But the Aston Martin, well, it's different. It's more about hooliganing about. It's just a giant automotive two-fingered salute to just about everyone, really. Let's go. Cool. 